So in the last video where we looked at the top five CPU recommendations, we looked at it for non-overclockers, people who just want to get into the market, slap a CPU in a motherboard, slap some memory in, and install Windows and start playing games. But today's a little different. Today is a guide or a top five list for those people who want to get into gaming, they like overclocking, and they also are on a budget and they want the absolute best price performance money can buy. So with that aside, let's get on with this list. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, this is Brian, and when it comes to overclocking, I am not too sure how many people exactly overclock their CPUs. Me for one, I always overclock CPUs when I can, and I highly recommend it to anyone who just wants to get extra performance at the expense of a little bit more power. Of course, when it comes to overclocking, there are some implications to overclocking versus not overclocking. The first being you generally need a better cooler than the stock cooler. Nowadays, you can generally get away with a $25 cooler, from AliExpress, which will do a great job of finding a sweet spot overclock on all the CPUs I've listed here today. The second thing is you will generally need a better motherboard than a really cheap generic board. The third thing, of course, is you will need skill to overclock these CPUs. With that aside, let's get on with number five. So making the list at number five is the E5-1650. This is Sandy Bridge IPC, comes in at 128 US dollars. That's shipped to your door. So you're getting six cores, 12 threads, and you can overclock this thing. It does get to around 4.4, 4.5 gigahertz on a decent X79 motherboard. Now this CPU would have definitely made it higher up the list if it wasn't for those X79 motherboards because with overclocking, especially on this CPU, you'll generally want a pretty good motherboard. Now I have ordered in some WAN and motherboards, but I don't know how well they'll overclock. Only time will tell. I do have some high hopes for these boards because if they are good and they come in at $100, then I can highly recommend this CPU even more than I'm recommending it today. Though in terms of gaming and this CPU, once you overclock it, this thing will play even the latest titles absolutely fine. You can even pair it up with something like a GTX 1080 and not get a CPU bottleneck. Also, the $25 VTG5 cooler will do an absolutely fine job of keeping this thing under wraps. And also another benefit is you can utilize DDR3 memory even in quad channels. So you don't have to worry too much about overclocking DDR3 memory. You can generally put inexpensive DDR3 memory on this board and you'll get away with some very good performance. So now coming in at number four is the i5-2500K. This CPU is phenomenal, especially at 75 bucks. You can couple it with a cheap Z68 motherboard, get that cooler as I mentioned before, and you can get this thing generally to 4.6 gigahertz on even the cheapest Z68 motherboards. I haven't had a 2500K yet that hasn't gone up to 4.6 gigahertz, even in the dead heat of summer. Now, some people will say that the four core, four threaded CPU, the 2500K, is dated, but I haven't ran into one instance where the CPU couldn't get up and boogie in the latest titles. Even games like PUBG, I was getting well over 80 FPS when this thing was overclocked. So it is a really good CPU if you're on a budget, but you want a little bit more power than some of the other budget options that I'm gonna recommend here today. Now coming in at number three is the W3670. This CPU is currently going for $41. Six cores, 12 threads, Westmere architecture, 32 nanometers. This thing, even in today's games, is such a beast. You'll generally expect with a decent X58 board to get this CPU to around 4.4 gigahertz. Now in the past, I have uh, tested this on a lot of different motherboards. I find on X58, you'll generally wanna go with an Asus motherboard or an ASRock board. They're the two boards that I've had a lot of no problems or no headaches with, as opposed to some of the other boards out there. I generally find there are some weird settings. The UD3R, even though as much as I love the hardware on that board, I sometimes get some BIOS bugs that prevent me from getting that CPU to a stable four plus gigahertz. So ultimately the W3670 is awesome value at $41. However, it would have made it higher on the list if it wasn't for the X58 boards being generally more expensive than other motherboards. They're also getting rarer to find. However, there are some generic X58 boards out there, but I haven't tested them yet. I am ordering them in, so I will get the verdict on those as soon as I can for you guys, especially when it comes to overclocking. But of course, as I said before, try and snap up an ASRock or an ASUS board, and you'll be having some good days. If you wanna get an MSI board or a Gigabyte board, I generally find their higher end X58 boards are really good, but their mid-range and low-range boards, especially the MSI low-range X58 boards, I would avoid them like the plague. Also, another thing like the W3670 is it has a QPI score of one. 
So it'll generally work on any X58 board, even those brands that you really haven't heard of before. There are a few of them out there, especially on the X58 line. And so the W3670 will practically work on any X58 board as opposed to the X5670, which has a QPI score of two. So sometimes it doesn't work on particular X58 motherboards. Now, before we move on to number two, another benefit of the X58 lineup is that triple channel memory. So you can get some cheap DDR3 memory, whack it in triple channel configuration, and you'll be getting better bandwidth than you would on dual channel. This makes this motherboard much more relevant in today's games than it ever did in the past. So coming in at number two now is the X3430. I've covered this CPU in the past. It's only $7. It's a i5 equivalent is the i5-750. So for seven bucks, you can generally whack this on any H55 and P55 motherboard, overclock it to around 3.8 gigahertz, uh, even sometimes higher. It does depend on the CPU since it does have a low base clock and you'll be getting some really good performance. PUBG, for example, on this CPU when it was overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz was running absolutely fine. Not to mention it's an i5 without hyperthreading, so it won't put as much of a strain on your motherboard as say the next CPU that we're going to mention. Also on that note, with this CPU, it does utilize DDR3 memory, and it'd be great to couple with something like a GTX 1060, of course, if you can pick one up in today's current market. And coming in at number one for the top five used overclockable CPUs for early 2018 is the X3440. So it's only 10 digits higher than the X3430, but of course you get a higher base clock multiplier and you get hyper-threading. So it is the same architecture, same IPC, but of course that hyper-threading makes it a little bit more relevant than the X3430. And it only costs $16. So again, you can couple it with those cheap H55 or P55 motherboards, and you've got yourself one phenomenal gaming experience. Honestly, you can go out and get the X3470. It's a little bit more expensive. You will get a bit more flexibility, I find, but I've never ran into a case where an X3440 couldn't go to 3.8 gigahertz with the right settings. For cooling, this thing will stay pretty cool. The $25 cooler, I highly recommend this because you do get a bit of future-proofing out of this thing. If you want to upgrade to a six core, 12 threaded CPU, this cooler will do an absolutely fine job. And of course, for 25 bucks shipped worldwide, it's a no-brainer in terms of cooling. Now, what you can do with this CPU for gaming, PUBG, Dota 2, all those popular multiplayer titles, this thing will handle it with ease. You might want to couple it with a GTX 1066 gigabyte model or something with the equivalent power. Say for instance, a 780 Ti or a GTX 970 or even an R9 290 or 390 if you can pick them up. And you'll just have, as I said before, a wonderful gaming experience. Also in regards to overclocking with that Steam survey, what we were seeing is that the numbers indicate that more people are actually overclocking their CPUs to date, especially those AMD numbers with the 3.7 gigahertz and above. It's great to see that a few more people are starting to overclock their CPUs. Of course, those percentage figures are still really low when you compare it to the total number of gamers on Steam. But of course, a big stigma out there at the moment with overclocking and one in turn that I would like to help overcome is that overclocking can damage your gear. It's really hard to do. And it's not hard because there's a lot of guides out there today. I've done a lot of guides in the past where I've helped people overclock. I'll put some links in the description below. Also, if you wanna see in 2018, maybe some updated higher quality guides, then I'll definitely get them done for you, especially P55, LGA1366, and even Sandy Bridge, where currently there's a lot of value for money. Also on that note, with overclocking, of course, like anything in the wrong hands, it can be dangerous. And of course, you can cause damage to your components if you either run them too hot or you run too much voltage through them. It's usually a combination of both that does kill hardware. But of course, if you get a really good cooler, you monitor your temperatures and you just lock in some pretty safe settings that are usually mentioned in a lot of guides, then you should be absolutely fine. Of course, once you get your head around it and it's now a new skill that you can learn and then apply to future overclocking in the future. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's top five used CPUs for overclocking in early 2018. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. If you have any other CPUs that you wanna recommend, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. Also for the motherboards, I will put some links in the descriptions below for you guys, just so you can check out what you can get that's readily available. Now also another thing is, with all these CPUs that I've recommended here today, they are readily available. So you can go on AliExpress, there's heaps of them in stock, and if you want to get into PC gaming on the cheap, 
you can definitely do it with today's guide. Rather than recommending some one-off CPUs, and definitely I'm a big fan of the one-off deals. I highly recommend uh, looking in your local listings, trying to find those deals if you can, because in the past, as I've said in the previous video, you can get some really good deals that'll eclipse all these top five CPUs if you are on your game and you're looking for bargains, just mainly from people who just don't want their used hardware anymore. And especially if they haven't overclocked it, they'll be like, wow, my new gear is so much faster than my old gear. But when you get that old gear and you overclock it and you tune it up and you clean it up, change the thermal paste, you'll have a really good gaming experience. Honestly, as I've said in the past, if all I had was a couple of hundred bucks and a 1080p 24 inch monitor, I'd be absolutely home and hosed when it came to PC gaming, especially with the used PC hardware and something like a GTX 780, I'd have no problems enjoying PC gaming in 2018. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.